hey guys, it's Maisie. And for today's video, I am going to do another story time because we people, all of us are story times, am I right? So today's story time is about my experience at MadCon, which I done on the 29th of May last year, so 2016, when they done their like their first ever international tour. So let's get into the video. Basically, it's the month before they done the tour, the tickets went on sale, and I was like, "Wait, well, I need tickets because I love MadCon," and it was the first time they were coming to the UK, so I was like gotta go even though it wasn't the old MacCon, so like Nash Hayes Carter wasn't there either Jack and Jack and like Sean and all that like weren't on the tour I was like I need to go because Hunter Roland was on that and I live for that guy I love Hunter Roland so on the new one they had I'm literally looking at my poster right here they still had Aaron Taylor and Cameron because well they're the main three and they're like the lads so you know they've got to be there really and um, they had hunter and brandon roland they had willie jones christian de la grosso trey schaefer chris mars and blake gray and i love blake as well i basically went on like to see it because hunter and blake were there if i'm t being totally honest with you because they're my favorites and they're the youngest on the tour I was a bit mad that Jacob Sartorius never came to the U European, like European tour with them, but you know, I wasn't that bothered about seeing him because I'm going to see him like in the future anyway, at a future like one of his gigs, so I'm not really that bothered because I was like, I'll just wait till he's got his music out like. So I brought the tickets and that lot, and then when we went, I was extremely excited, my eye, my eye had. And I decided to do a massive poster. I'm going to go get that poster for you. I've done this massive poster, which is probably OTT, but wait for it, wait for it. Yes, I put fairy lights on it. Blue fairy lights. Because I thought I was being one of the massive cool kids. Even though, oh, I still love this poster to this day. I mean, just look at that, it's perfection. Um, so yeah, I basically carried this around me for the whole day and I wrote I Heart Hunter and Brandon Roland. I have a U as KU at the bottom because that's what they say. And I was like, felt bad for little Blakey, little Blakey boy, so put him in the corner there. And you know, if they ever anyone wanted to follow me, I decided to put my name on it. You know, my handle, but it's that small that no one saw it anyway, so. You know, probably should have made that a bit bigger. So whilst I'm like hefting around this massive sign, I'm trying to wait in a queue. So I got that carried around all day. I went with my mum because I literally, no one I knew was into Macon at this point. So I went with my mum. She was like, I wanted to see camp anyway, so she wasn't that bothered. And plus Harvey and Roger were on there. And like, we've like been supporting them since like 2014. So like, you know what I'm saying? And um, we were waiting in the line and we were meant to go in at one or half twelve. It was something like that. And they were pretty late. They were like two and a half hours late starting the show because problem was a, like the venue sent an email out on behalf of MadCon's company saying to be there at a different time to what MadCon wanted them to be there at. So it was a massive confusion. Bart had to go around basically. Mac the Birmingham Confusion is on Cameron documentary Chasing Cameron. So basically, if you want to know more about that, you might want to probably go watch the show <laughs> to find that out. But that was massive confusion, but I had to tell everyone about it, really. That was it. So finally, after like a two and a half hour wait, which only should have been 20 minutes because we got there late, we walked in, like, got our tickets sorted, whatever. I was very, very excited by this point. A small room anyway, so it had like the bottom standing bit and it had two like tiers, if you know what I mean, like that go around. Because it was only at the o like O2 Institute in Birmingham, so it wasn't exactly like a big place. Um, I got the priority ticket because I wanted a free poster. Because I, I wanted to meet them, but I didn't exactly want to pay like £120 because I didn't really have that money at the time. Like, I was gonna go for the family photo up, but I was like, mm, no, because I'll probably be in a mess. I'll probably freeze. 
won't go good. Like it just wouldn't have worked out, if you know what I mean. So I just went for priority, like £40, that's enough for me. And it's like all good. So basically when we first went in, we because we were standing, we were like, we're not going to go on the tears or whatever. Like, I want the full atmosphere. So me and mum were like head down in this little bit. We were like stood at like the back, but not if you know what I mean. We were like sort of like in the back, in the middle, if that makes sense. And we were stood there and we were like, I was freaking out big time because they were in the same place as me. So I was freaking. And then Kat, you hear Cameron's voice come over on the microphone and on Bart and I was just like, oh my God, oh my God, like, oh my God, like, what am I going to do? And so then Cam like runs on, the whole squad like run on and I'm just like screaming. I like wasn't prepared for this, mind you. I really wasn't prepared. And then he starts singing She Bad and I was just like, holy grail, holy grail. Yes, Cam. And I was like rapping all my lyrics and everything. I was like proper there. And then it was like all I want. And I was just like, all I want is you. And I was like, if only Daniel Skies was here right now to sing this with you, because that would make my lifetime. And then, basically, they done their little beginning bit where they'll sing. Aaron sang She Know What She Doing, and I was just like, hey, because I really like that song, you know. Like, pre-order it and everything, because that's the type of fan I am. Um, so, anyway, after they went off, they went to do, like, their VIP things. We didn't see them. We paid, basically, to see them on their tour when literally we saw them twice two or three times we saw them beginning one random song in the middle and the end that was it and it was sort of like was it really worth going it was worth it because basically it was my con and i wanted to go so bad but it wasn't really organized it was worth it and everything it was good it was just the organization of it the organization was awful but if you watch Chase and Cameron, you'll see that they weren't proud and happy with the organisation and basically just went to pot. So that's sort of how it happened. You can't have it always good, you know what I mean? Like, first European tour and everything, they, they did do a good show. So anyway, they went to their VIP things. This so the whole time, Colby was um, basically just presenting it, going around doing what he does, doing what he does best, you know, little Colby. Crystal Grosso was on the DJ playing all them tunes you know and basically it was really good and then like Willie Jones had a bit but actually he's done a lot so did Trey Schaefer and then little Trey bless him he done like because he doesn't agree with the prices that they make you pay to meet the like the influencers the artists you know what I mean and um so basically he does it for free in the merch room which I think is pretty cool, like after his show, and you can like go meet him for free, go get a signature or whatever. But I was like, no, it's going on. I was just sat there. I was just there like, whoa, I can't cope with this. They started playing Boyfriend by Justin Bieber. And I kid you not, I'm one of the biggest Justin Bieber fans that you, oh my, no, he's really itchy, that you will probably ever meet. I love the lad. Like I, he's my legend. Like I, I look up to him like so much. And so when these girls start singing it behind me, I was like, <laughs> No, 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 it's not happening. So, me being the person that I am, being the biggest fan girl ever, I started singing so loud. I was off key, out of tune, off pitch, but at this point, I really didn't care. The only thing on my mind is, I'm gonna sing louder than these two girls behind me, but it's fine because I weren't and it shook them up. So, you know, and I was like spitting that little rappy little bit in the middle, and I was like, that. I was just, I was it was my time to shine if I'm totally honest with you that was like my time me and my mum were like right let's go get our merch let me go get merch before it gets any busier the queue out there or before like Harvey or Road Trip come on because they're like who I'm really here for so <laughs> we walk out to go and get our merch the queue was really long we were waiting in there for like 15 minutes and I start, me and my mum started talking to these like group of girls behind. And my mum went, oh, have you met Harvey? And they're like, who? And I was like, we were pretty like shocked by this. And my mum was like, Harvey, you know, like he was a Friday down over percent of like CBBC, you know. And they were like, oh, so that's who that random dude was. No, he's not a random dude. He's not a random dude. Like I was pretty offended about this. So was my mum. She's still wound up to this day about it. So we were like, she was showing us all the photos from her meet and greet because she met them. They met them. And we were just like, yeah, that's Harvey. And they were like, 
Oh, that's him. I just sort of like said hi and hugged him like really awkwardly because I didn't know who he was and I was just like, oh, shame on you, shame on you. At least even if you don't know who the artist is or who the person you're meeting is, or who they are before you even get there. You look at who's gonna be there and then you like go Google them so you know at least a little bit, even their name's enough for me, you know what I mean? Like I can't be doing. And so whilst we're waiting in this queue, the girl behind goes, I'm missing Taylor's set. Sorry, what? I'm not kidding you. Taylor Kniff's set was when we were stood in the line to get to merch. Could they have done it at a more inconvenient time? Probably not. So he's there singing all these jams and I'm just like, really wanted to see Taylor perform, you know? But I never got to see it. So I got my merch. I got this Cameron Dallas top because I really wanted these tops because everyone has this top. I got my free poster and I got a Hunter Rowland top. It's just a t-shirt. It's like nice baby aqua blue and it just has the logo on the front with H in the middle and then Hunter Rowland right around it, which I love so much, it's a really cute top. And so I got that, me and mum legged it back into the room. We walked in, the one song that I wanted to see, I managed to ca catch, catch. So I was very happy about that. Trey came on whilst Taylor was on stage, and I was like, all right, this is it, this is the moment, this is the moment they're gonna sing Cash On Me, isn't it? So they start singing Cash On Me, and I was just like, I was like, this is meant to be. So I was like, living my life, just cash on me. And I was like, right, it's fine. I, d I want to see Taylor's set, but not that bad. But I would have liked to have seen it. But I got my merch and I saw the song that I wanted to hear the most from him. So I was happy about it. And so me and mum were like, right, we don't need to go anywhere now. Until basically we leave to go home. So let's make our way down to the front. So when we get down there, we see Harvey and Road Trip. So, like, Willie Jones and all that lot are performing at this point. We, like, go around the side because that was, our, that was my plan. Like, when I put these tickets, go around the side. Go around the side and sort of, like, scoop into the middle. Like, at the front in the mid... Front of the side, like. So that was what we done. And I really needed the toilet. No, no, no. My mum wouldn't let me go because she wanted to be at the front to see Harvey. And I was like, right, okay, fair enough, fair enough. Um, so Harvey came on, went crazy, he looked very nervous, bless him, and I was just like, oh Harvey, I want to hug you so bad right now, make sure everything's okay, because you look a bit, a little bit skeen. So that happened, we saw Harvey set, and well, Harvey being Harvey, he just slayed it like always, so yeah. And then, after Harvey came on, Road Trip came on, and I was so excited about seeing Road Trip, because Andy, out the band, was in Overload in 2014 and in 2015 they went on the X Factor but then they didn't get through, they got kicked out of boot camp so then they broke up after they'd been on that but Andy still got managed by Blair who managed Overload and stayed on and made a new band called Road Trip so I was like fan since day one of Road Trip and I've just like <laughs> been there since day one Andy like you know you should thank me I've been here since the overload days and none of them here know who you are so I was like proper like yeah and um because <laughs> I was stood at the front I was screaming these lyrics at them everyone else like most people in the room were just like I'm singing the words because I just know them out the charts or I don't know who you are but I don't want to be rude and I was just like mate I know who you are I, I'm your fan I know all your words. I was screaming these like lyrics at them. I'm not even joking. I was stood there like this, my arms in the air, shouting these words. When I think back on it, how embarrassing this was. And um, Brooklyn, and Brooklyn and Ryan, my favourite, even though I love Andy, but Mikey's like not because I just don't really understand like the whole Andy, like the whole Mikey situation. But anyway, so. I'm stood there going like this, Brooklyn looks me dead in the eye and does this back. That was it, my life was over. My life was over at that point. It's like people around me were looking at me like, and I was just like, huh? like pop a fangirl in moment. And I was like, I'm gonna do it again. Like, Rye, you better do this back. Rye turns around to me and just goes, love you. <sighs> he said, love you. And he did this thing. That was enough, that was, that was it. I was like, I don't care about any more in life. I just, 
Mikey asked him this, Mikey looked at me and went, so I was just like, yes, right, I've got three out of four. Can I get Andy? No. No. Obviously, that wouldn't be the case, because it's Andy. It's a little Andy Fowler, isn't it? So, no. Sadly, I got three out of four looks. Which I'm happy about, because, you know, <laughs> three people looked at me. They looked at me, physically looked at me, and like, <sighs> give me a signal or something. So, I'm very happy about that. It's just that I would have loved for Andy to either give me a heart, said something, you know, showed his appreciation, <laughs> known I exist, you know. But other than that, I'm happy, like, you know. And so after that, they went off and the show carried on. And Colby was like, oh, we forgot to take requests of people. Songs like earlier in the show, like, yo guys, like, what do you want us to play? And everyone was stood there like go sweatshirt play sweatshirt like you know Jacob saw to us put sweatshirt on and he goes do you guys like know the words of sweatshirt and everyone was like yes like put it on so sweatshirt starts and we all sing when you gotta sleep at night you know as you do singing like proper like bout in it no one was mentally physically or anything prepared for this moment all of the mad con lads lads mad con lads like the full squad run onto the stage to start jumping around singing the lyrics and the microphones it was too much, it was too much. In that one split second, they all ran on. The whole crowd, here's the barrier. They run on, whole crowd just bang. That was it. Everyone just <sighs> runs to the front. It was like, whoa, no one was ready. No one's prepared, it was a nightmare. But it was good, because no one cared. Because everyone was like, hey, it's my shirt. Oh my God, the lads are in front of me. Like, you know what I mean? That's what I was like, I was freak freaking out. I was like, I was stood here. Hunter was stood there, I was like this. What is happening? What is happening? What is this? I couldn't cope. And then Cam stood there and I was like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Like, this cannot be happening. Here is Cameron. Here's me. I'm in, like, distance to Cameron. Like, there's only a barrier between us. It was enough for me. I was like, my, my head was gone. Everything was gone. I was too, like, shocked to put this banner up at this point. I'm in a panic. As you do. Then the song ended, they went off, everyone pretended like nothing happened. And then it was like only like a few, it was like an hour left of the show, at this point, maybe half an hour. So we stayed where we were, because we were like, we're not going to miss the end bit. And the end bit was amazing. I was prepared for anything at this point. They all ran back on, like confetti everywhere, water spurting everywhere. It was it was just amazing. They were singing, dancing. I was having the time of my life. I I picked my banner up. I put the lights on. I've never put a banner so like quickly in the air. It's unreal. I literally went. My hand was in the air of this banner. I whacked five people in the face who was like stood around me. I didn't even say sorry because all I cared about in my brain was for Hunter, Blake, or Brandon to see this poster. That's all I cared about at this point. So I was like, I'm not, I, I'll do anything to for them to see this poster. So I was stood there like shouting these words, my, like my poster above my head, as you do, living life. And Brandon looked over at me. He looked over at me, but then looked away as quick. It was like one second glance. And I was like, I'm ever, forever gonna remember that one second glance, right? But hello poster here go tell hunter to come look at me and appreciate me because i hunter's my favorite i love you and all that brandon but hunter's my favorite out of you two like go tell him to come over look at me no i exist you know but yeah he, he gave me a one second glance and that's what i'm gonna take it i will take it any day of the week so that happened basically they went off end of the end of the show they piled out we piled out then we me and my mom like went over to the car park because my dad was picking us up all of a sudden we hear this we're on the other side of the road at this point we hear loads of screams who's that who's that what's happening what's happening why are people screaming so no because there's like a metal gate down on the alleys like by the venue and there's loads those girls like huddled around it screaming we're like so what's happening road trip i repeat road trip were there 
taking pictures of people. I was like, are you are you actually joking? I was like, by the time I got back over to the, it was one of them. If I went to the other side of the road, they would have gone by this point because of the traffic and how slow I walk anyway, even though I would have sprinted. It's not the point. They would have gone, and I even though, even if I did get there in, when they were still there, I wouldn't have been able to have got a photo anyway because they would have been told to leave. And I wouldn't have got to the front of the hood, if you know what I mean. So that was literally no point. So I was just stood there like, road tripper there, like I can't believe this, this is an absolute joke. And everyone we were speaking to, like, at the concert who we spoke to, who had VIP, were like, it's a waste of money. And I sort of thought it was a bit ungrateful in a way. Like, I get that they paid £120 and they've only got, like, 10 seconds with the people. But, you know, there are people who wanted to meet them. Like, you didn't have to buy the ticket if you didn't want to. You could have got, like, a lower price. Like, it is your sort of fault, you know? Like, yeah, I understand you paid a lot of money and you wanted to meet them, like, properly and you only had 10 seconds, but you would know that every show that people do like that, you only get, like, a 10-second meet and greet with them. Like, it's just how it works because they've got so many people to get through with such a short amount of time. Like, that's just how it works. That's just how it functions. Like, you can't physically change that. So I was just, like, bit... So they were, like, all bummed about it and I was just like, mate... If I had the money, I would have gone and met them. Like, I would have, even if I had 10 seconds with them, I wouldn't have cared. Like, I'd have been so grateful and happy that I actually met them and physically got to touch them in real form. Like, know that they're actually real and not just an online holographic imagination. You know what I mean? I met Bart. That's a fun fact. I met Bart. It was like when we like first went in and we waited for it to start and Bart was doing his little rounds around the little crowd and I was like, oh my God, there's Bart Bordel on he's a manager I need a photo but I was in that much shock that my mum took the photo and I was like hey spa like how you doing like nice hair and all that Um, I was in that much shock that I even though I had the poster in my hands in the photo like I had it stood on the ground I didn't have the decency or the brains at this point because I was in that much shock to go oh my god like do you like my photo do you like the poster that I made because he might have like you never know he might have like sent me to VIP because that's what they do in some cases. And I was just like, it never crossed my brain until he left. So that was a sad moment. But I'm glad I got to meet Bart, you know? I'll forever treasure that, treasure that moment. I'm meeting little Bart Bordela. Very happy with myself about that. Um, so yeah, hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to comment down below other videos that you would like me to film. And you can comment down below. I would like you to comment down below what was your favourite concert or event like this that you've ever been to? Because I, I would really like to know, like, what was your favourite that you've been to in your lifetime? So, yeah. You can give it a big thumbs up as well. Be sure to smash the like button. And you can give a subscribe. You can follow all my social media on screen right now. So be sure to check that out. Don't forget to tweet me. You can tweet me because I'm always on Twitter and I love tweets. So you can tweet me and I will see you guys next week with another video.